don't I know you, sir? Don't believe so. I haven't been here in many years. Name's Silas Greaves. Silas Greaves? The bounty hunter? Used to be. Ah, well, what are you doing here in Abilene? Just passing through. Got a little business to take care of. Well, sir, it would be an honor if you would allow me to buy you a beer. Hell, son, it would be my honor to drink it. I'm Molly. Howdy. I'm Dwight. That's Jack and Steve. Ben's behind the bar. Oh, I bet you got some great stories. A couple. <laughs> Any of them true? Jack, be nice. A few. What about your shootout with Henry Plummer's gang in Bannock, Montana? I is that where you started as a bounty hunter? That's what it says in this here dime novel. Don't believe everything you read in them dime novels, boy. <coughs> man I hunted was back when I was riding with Billy the Kid. You knew Billy the Kid? <coughs> Damn right. That strong son of a bitch had no fear. Wouldn't back down for nobody. I heard he collected the tin stars off any crooked lawman who crossed it. It was a war, boy. The Lincoln County War. And Billy promised his regulators would take the life of every bastard who helped bushwhack John Tunstall. Kid had a big chip on his shoulder and a hair trigger temper. Made him dangerous as hell. It was about 30 years ago. Billy was hiding out in an abandoned farm near Stinking Springs. I threw in with the kid because the man I had sworn vengeance on was riding with Billy's enemies. But before I tell you why I want that son of a bitch dead, let me tell you what happened that day. I was heading back to the hideout when suddenly I had this funny feeling. Funny, ha ha. No, Steve. The other kind of funny. Merde. Appuyez sur O pour consulter les objectifs. Ok. I knew those two morons would never let me through. I had no choice. Who's that? Is he with us? Ah, we gained experience on tuer les ennemis. Non, non, ça mire au personnage. Ok. Was it Pat Garrett's posse? Oh yeah. I heard the shots and I knew I had to move fast. Garrett and his army of deputies had surrounded the entire homestead. Fire at will! Spread out, goddammit! They're coming from the rear! I decided to help Billy and the boys out of this. Well, this way is a new question. Mexico was paying for the kids' apprehension. Garrett was able to hire every gun hand in Lincoln County. That front door meant putting my butt in a shooting gallery, so I decided to get sneaky.
La dernière fois de compétence, c'est là, j'ai gagné 3 catégories IHT, la plus à gauche, piste héros, tir de ligne à longue distance, euh... on va prendre piste héros double gâchette, c'est la rigolo. Est-ce qu'il était en terre que l'instantion est remplie Shooters Garrett hired weren't the sharpest tools in the shit. A lot of them were saddle tramps or sod busters or drunken drifters looking to make a few bucks. Il est où ce qu'il me tourne dessus that were left twice as mad. Slog, but I finally fought my way around the back of the house. <sighs> and like that, I was inside. None the worse for wear. Deader than a rat in a I trap. passed Dirty Dave. I'm putting you down. How about that? And upstairs, I, I found that. Billy and Charlie Baldry.
Billy looked at me and said, About time, amigo. Grab a gun and get to the window. Wait, so you were friends with Billy the Kid? Yeah, sort of. Anyway, we were surrounded by dozens of deputized shooters who wanted to do us harm. You Garrett's men were dropping like flies, but they just kept on coming. I can keep this up all day. I think I got one. That's when Charlie got hit. They're catching us in a crossfire, shouted Billy. Get to the other side. sense of invincibility that many young men have. Like Jack here. What are you saying, old man? Jack, he's just joshing me. Yeah, he better be. Mr. Graves, <sighs> please continue. Please, call me Silas, ma'am. Now, where was I? You were heading for the barn. Gonna cut you a new one! <laughs> when I thought I was done with them, more of these hapless bastards would pop up. Finally, I had the stables within my reach. And that's when I met Sheriff Pat Garrett. I read that you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, sir. That backstabbing bastard with that tacked on tin star. in a dime novel? It said he showed no fear as he took your measure with eyes like a rattlesnake.
killed him in a fair fight. <laughs> Is that what that Penny Dreadful said? No, boy. That ain't what I meant when I said I meant Pat Garrett. So let me start again. I finally reached those damn stables. Stepped inside, and bam! Last thing I heard was Garrett's voice. That's not Billy. And go on, how did it end? End? Boy, that was just the beginning. So what happened? Did Garrett arrest you? Yeah, after I came to. Bastard had clocked me with his colt. And the kid surrendered? When he realized there was no getting out of there alive. So they locked you up in Lincoln? Indeed they did. Sentenced me to hang right along with the kid. <laughs> it's important to know that I was only riding with Billy so I could find the bastard I was after. He was with John Kinney's gang, and they were sworn enemies of Billy's regulators. Why were you after him? I owed that son of a bitch a bullet for what he had done to me and mine. Instead, all I got for myself was a goddamn death sentence. Luckily, it was right around then that I heard Billy make his move. He shot Jim Bell and a few other guards as he made his getaway. Later, they wrote that some lady friend planted a pistol for him in the privy. What the papers didn't say is that Billy helped me escape, too. First order of business was finding a firearm. Luckily, I located Deputy Bob Ollinger's mean ass shotgun. I saw Billy through the window, and he yelled that I should take to the rooftops to make my escape. So I did. Anybody see Billy? Hell yeah. That scattered gun is like a double-barreled howitzer. It could blow a man clear off his feet. You hardly had to aim the damn thing. Guards were everywhere looking for him. I had to jump from roof to roof like a damn alley cat. I followed the planks where I could, but... Some of that wood was slippery as hell. The whole town was up in on Oh! And suddenly, I was a fugitive. How the hell So that bastard you were after, what did he do? He did me and my family a grievous harm. But I knew if I was ever going to find him, I would need to get my ever-loving ass out of there. I tried to be stealthy and sneak my way past. You! But hell, if they weren't all waiting for me. Apparently, some of them thought I was Billy. You hooligans go to hell, coward! <sighs> we can take them!
do He's this. In town somewhere. See, me and the kids shared a certain oh. similarity in build and color. I was just glad I had Deputy Bob's mean ass shotgun. There's children here. Stop him! So much lead was whizzing by my head. It was like everyone in Lincoln wanted to put me in the ground. I knew I needed to find a horse. Though I never did have a great fondness for those four-legged grass eaters. Smelly, sweaty, ungrateful beast. We prize them too high, if you ask me. Euh, ouais, traverser la ville, ok, mais... Ah oh merde, d'accord, j'ai pas eu. Mais où était le kid pendant que tu étais occupé de te faire shot at? Gone. Et c'est quand il a occurré à moi pourquoi Billy m'a envoyé pour moi. So I could be a hapless decoy and draw attention while he snuck out of town. I knew if I made it out of there in one piece, no one would put a price on my head. Because everybody in Lincoln would be dead? No. They all thought I was Billy. And all that blame would fall on him. <sighs> Meanwhile, Deputy Bob Ollinger was organizing a posse to put me down. He was already a mean son of a bitch, but he was doubly pissed that I stole his mean ass shotgun. Anyway, it was me or them, and the only way forward led me straight to perdition. But the cards were dealt, and I had no choice but to play it.
I found what I was looking for. The stables on the edge of town. <laughs> I guess Billy saved your ass, taking out Bob Ollinger the way he did. Billy didn't kill Bob. Well, sure he did. He dispatched him right after he shot Deputy Bell. No, sir. Because Bob came right up behind me, angry as hell that Billy had lit out. Hello, Bob, I said. I think you better let me go. And he says, I don't think so, boy. Not with my shotgun. So we stood there in the middle of the street, eyeball to eyeball. He intended to kill me, and I knew I had no choice but to defend myself. Killed him in a fair fight. Everybody saw I had no damn choice. Well, Lincoln got a mite depopulated that day. That Garrett gunned down Billy three months later. So, so where'd you go after Lincoln? Mexico. Until I realized nobody was looking for me. I ended up taking a job at the Rurales. The Mexican Rurales? I was hired to help them track down the cowboys. The most vicious outlaw gang in Cochise County? Curly Bill Brocious, Johnny Ringo? Led by old man Clanton himself. They must have paid you a pretty penny to take them hombres on. Not really. But truth be told, I had my own reasons for going after those boys. So was the bastard you were after now riding with the cowboys? Roscoe Bob Bryant was his name. Oh. But no, this time it was a different bastard I was after. The aforementioned Mr. Ringo. I came upon them robbing a stagecoach, which wasn't surprising being they were such murderous thieves and bastards. The bandits wore red scarves, so I knew they worked for the old man. Over there! There! Yeah. Oh, I did my best to help those poor bastards. Later, the attackers were dead, and I checked the stagecoach to see how many passengers were still breathing. None. It was then I wondered if the rocks weren't hiding more bandits. Was that all of them, or did I just hit the rear guard? I quickly got my answer. They attacked from on high like Apaches off the hill. in great numbers from above and rained down lead on their hapless enemies' heads. 
Making use of the high ground, whatever else they have. Yep, the Apaches always appeared out of nowhere, and there never seemed to be an end to them. Hold on, were you attacked by Apaches? W what happened to the Cowboys? Did I say they were Apaches? I said Clanton's Cowboys attacked me Apache style. I was in a pitched battle, but I was holding my own against an overwhelming enemy force. See, at the time, I was still pretty green and would often blunder into regrettable situations. But I just kept shooting at anything I could see up in those damn rocks. I didn't see Ringo, but I knew he was with the Cowboys. He and Roscoe Bob had done me a great wrong, and I was determined to have my revenge. But to get to Ringo, I knew I'd have to find my way past these other assholes first. Unfortunately, I was running out of ammo. Another perfect example of my relative inexperience as a hunter of men. I immediately knew that a tactical retreat was called for, as my vengeful fury was much less impressive without the bullets to back it up. Finally, they managed to corner me. Trapped as I was, the odds of my survival seemed pretty slim. Luckily, serendipity was on my side as I suddenly spotted a way out of my predicament. I ran ahead as if the devil himself was after me. Bullets were whizzing by my ears, but I wasn't about to roll over and die. I just kept running like there was no tomorrow. Because there wouldn't be if Clanton and his men caught up with me. As I was scurrying around those caves, I thought, what was I thinking, going up against a gang like this? running, not knowing where the hell I was going. And that's when something miraculous happened. Like mana from heaven, I found the desiccated remains of what looked like an Apache warrior. The old weapon next to him supplied me with some much needed ammunition. Pat <laughs> Masterson once told me it was more important to be lucky than good. And he would know. And imagine my surprise when I found a fistful of dynamite to go along with that ammo. That stroke of good fortune evened the odds and bolstered my confidence. It was time to turn the tables. Time for the prey to become the predator. Time for the hunter to become the hunter. Time. All right, Jesus, we get it. They were right where you wanted them. That's right, Jack. I was done. Oh. The old man's boys were not expecting that. No, sir. I came at them like a wildcat. My fury knew no bounds. It was finally time for that old man to pay for his sins.
I yelled out at the top of my lungs. Planting, I'm coming for you! A little stealth might have made more sense, to be perfectly honest. Because that old fool had a gallon gun and enough bullets to last him till kingdom come. But I knew I could not let that deter me. Not if I was to find and kill Ringo. I needed to get that old man off that gun. Most everyone thought it was the Ruales who had come up against him in Guadalupe Canyon. But it was just me. You can't hide from Dynamite! Oh man, I'm not to do. one of the cowboys made it out of there alive and told Ike and Billy Clanton that it wasn't the Mexican who took their father's life that day. They just assumed it was one of the Earps, and that little misunderstanding eventually led to that legendary gunfight at the old K Corral. A few weeks after that dust-up at the OK Corral, I was still after Johnny Ringo. I had tracked him and the cowboys to their hideout at a sawmill, and they were loaded for bear. So what exactly did Johnny Ringo do to piss you off? <coughs> well, him and that old <coughs> bastard. Roscoe Bob Bright? Yep. They both deserve to die, and I promise I'll tell you why. First, I need to tell you about the cowboy's new boss, Curly Bill Brocious. Earth's coming! Get ready, boys. Oh. Hey, I shot the son of a bitch. Oh. Get out here! Yeah. 
Curly Bill took charge of the Cowboys upon the old man's demise. And after that gunfight at the OK Corral, the Clantons wanted revenge. So they murdered Morgan Earp and grievously wounded his older brother, Virgil. Doc went on what became known as the Vendetta Ride, hunting those outlaws down. So when I showed up, that's who they thought I was. killers around every corner, all wearing red bandanas. That's how the cowboys identified each other, and I was beginning to wish I had one myself. I wasn't about to let Ringo walk away unscathed. And that's what drove me forward. say that Ringo was infernally fast. I hardly saw anyone faster, boy. Certainly not Wyatt Earp. That man was all hat and no cap. <sighs> Earp wasn't much of a match for him, but Doc Holliday might have taken him. That lunger should have kept his nose out of it. He never charged anyone for the murder of Morgan Earp. Curly shot him in the back. That was common knowledge. Yeah, maybe so. But Ringo had nothing to do with 
He was just being loyal to a friend. Is that what you call it? Being loyal. Well, to get to that loyal friend, I had to pass by some buzz saws as big as a man. Excuse me, sir. I have a question. What's that, Dwight? After old man Clinton died, why didn't his son take over the Cowboys? Because Ike Clanton was dumber than a box of rocks and a yellow belly to boot. Was I? Taking down the entire cowboy gang single-handed. Indeed I was, Jack. It wasn't easy as those boys had good cover. You're dead. <laughs> everywhere, piles of lumber, and God knows what else for people to hide behind. That really was one hell of a sawmill. Quite an impressive operation. Did you see him? <coughs> We're about to get to that, Ben. Patience. I'm painting a picture here. 
There was this beautiful waterfall and a crystal clear stream that led to a verdant valley that was truly... Consider your picture painted. What happened next? Well, finally the bastards that were still alive made a last stand. That's so pretty. Bill, Johnny Ringo, and his compadres took off into the lumber yard, and I followed after. Are you saying they ran? Cowardice was not in Ringo nor Curly Bill's nature. No, sir. I never said they were running scared. They just wanted me out in the open. Time to dance with the devil! Okay, but crack IQ.
Come on out, son! Brocious gave me no choice but to take his life. But Ringo was nowhere to be found. I knew you didn't kill Ringo, because he was found dead in a different location altogether. To this day, his killer is still unknown. Indeed. Took me a few months before I finally tracked his ass to West Turkey Creek Canyon. Sir, I always thought that Doc Holliday was the one that killed him. Sorry I had to ruin the legend for you, boy. But the legend ain't always true. Doc Holliday had nothing to do with the death of Johnny Ringo. I was paid a healthy bounty for Ringo and Curly Bill, and realized there was real money to be made. That's why I went after Henry Plummer. Now, wasn't he the sheriff who augmented his income by shaking down miners and robbing gold shipments? That's the one. Oh, yeah, I remember him. He ran that gang of thieving outlaws called the Innocents. So it's true that you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him? Indeed I did, son. Indeed I did. I knew I needed resources if I was going to track down Roscoe Bob Bryant. And hunting Plummer looked like a good way to get rich quick. <coughs> as the local vigilantes exposed him as the leader of the bandits and put a generous price on his head. Plummer rallied his gang to plunder one last gold mine before making their escape. And that's where I thought it I'd makes find him. You'd be nervous standing so close to all these goddamn barrels of gunpowder. Why would you be nervous? No one has the cojones to come after us. As long as you don't light up a cigar, we're fine. Ah, uh, besides, dark again. As my late father pointed out to me more than once, God made men. And Samuel Cole made a leap. Yeah. I 
I knew that dynamite wasn't mine, so I decided the polite thing would be to return it. It was the biggest gold rush since Sutter's Mill in 48. Unfortunately, prospectors weren't the only ones drawn to those riches. <clears throat> Travelers and hijacking gold shippers. Like those that ran with Plummer. Some were just regular folks I knew from town, drawn by greed and easy pickings. Charlie Crow, the blacksmith. James, who worked in the stable. Sam and Jeremiah Barber, the butcher's son. Ordinary citizens who lived a double life. Stealing and thieving and murdering their neighbors. Oh putain. Qu'est-ce qu'on veut n'importe quoi. of the Civil War. Stone-cold killers trained on the bloody fields of Shiloh and Antietam. Dangerous, desperate individuals. You ain't beefing me. Plummer had a lot of men on his payroll. A hell of a lot. That son of a bitch pretended to protect the public with one hand while stealing them blind with the other. He set up a defensive perimeter which I had no idea how to break. <laughs> outnumbered and in way over my head, but I was too damn stubborn and stupid to realize it. They must have thought I was tough, or had some kind of death wish, seeing as there were barrels of gunpowder everywhere. <coughs> one stray bullet, one stray spark, and I'd be blown to hell and gone. Did I have any second thoughts about what I was doing? No. I thought I was some kind of hero. I finally made it past and headed on to meet my destiny. But first, I had something I needed to figure out. 
I had a few ideas on how to get into that mine. But once I made my decision, I knew there was no turning back. So my first thought was to enter the nearest mine portal. I saw an entrance. Made sense. It was the quickest way in, but that also made it more dangerous. As there would undoubtedly be enemy pickets posted along the way. Once you enter a mine like that, it's easy to get all turned around. And that confusing maze of corridors wouldn't even be the worst of it. Some of those shafts could be as deep as hell. Single stumble or misstep can easily end in a deadly plunge to oblivion. Reflexes often make up for a lack of common sense. Luckily, I was never one to be easily bushwhacked. I would just need to be careful not to blow myself to kingdom come. gunpowder and dynamite everywhere, a body has to know what he shoots. <sighs> you can run, but you can... All it takes is one tiny spark, and boom. As a boy, I always loved the 4th of July. There he is! I do not deserve it! Oh. Oh. Ça fera quoi Ça fera avec une année. One wrong bullet should have turned that mine into a dead blasted tube. I freely admit that my plan of attack was not just moronic, but clearly in sight. It's a good thing that I abandoned that ridiculous plan before I even tried it. Instead, I spotted a ladder. A way into the mine from the opposite side. It was a long way around, but that approach seemed more sensible at the time. Of course, being I had a problem with heights, that scaffolding scared the bejesus out of me. Climbing down that ladder required some caution. Because even though I had a younger man's reflexes, no man can dodge a damn bullet while climbing down a rickety ladder. Bill. Oh, 
Donc je sens tu autre chose. Ah, on se prend un autre côté. Ah, je suis obligé de sauter là. Okay. Sheriff Plummer seemed quite the despicable character. When the vigilantes discovered what the sheriff was up to, people were outraged. That 10,000 they put on his head would go a long way to help me find the Merde. Il faut un peu d'un plat. Salut Spurp Comment vas-tu mission to settle that score come hell or high water. But first, I would have to make a choice. Take the elevator or climb the ladder. to use the element of surprise. Plus, I figured I could use the exercise. I was warmed up already, so what the hell. Alors, le jeu est un petit peu vieux, mais euh, j'ai pas encore le temps de le faire, donc... Euh... Plummer was a mad dog killer, and the people of Nevada City deserved better. Quelqu'un qui vient de voir deux morts en 40 secondes. Mais encore. Hein. De quoi parles-tu T'es derrière le son, ça va C'est pas trop fort le jeu Parce que j'ai je, réglé ça complètement à l'arrache tout à l'heure. Ah putain, je suis pas bien là. The point was taking him down would save a lot of lives, including my own. Ah tu peux deux fois le saut, ah oui, pour moi de son et le saut c'est clair que... C'est clair que là, je joue pas terrible. Euh, faut que j'aille où Faut que j'aille par là-bas. Bon bah impeccable du coup si le saut il est bien, c'est cool. Ah non, ouais, donc là le jeu là il a deux ans, euh... bah, il... ça fait déjà deux ans qu'il est sorti mais euh... j'ai pas encore eu l'occasion en fait d'y jouer, il est dans ma liste Steam depuis super longtemps. Et à chaque fois je fais autre chose, euh... et là je me suis dit je vais me caler une soirée pour, euh, pour y jouer. Ah il faut que je tue Henry. Oh Qu'est-ce qu'il me tape Wow, 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 wow.
merde. De quoi C'est Call of Juarez et Gunslinger. Bah en fait j'adore euh, j'adore l'univers western et du coup ce jeu il était euh, il faisait partie de ma liste parce que il est, il est super orienté arcade en fait. Je suis pas vraiment fan de FPS mais celui-là il est ultra bourrin et euh, pas mal basé sur le scoring d'ailleurs. En plus il est plutôt rigolo quoi, il y a, en fait c'est le mec qui raconte son histoire mais tu sens qu'il bluffe à moitié du temps, enfin il, il raconte des grosses conneries. Enfin il enjolive à fond l'histoire. Oh là mais je vais mourir là. Ah, je vais complètement mourir là. Ah merde. Bah, je pense que je vais galérer là. Il y a encore des mécanismes que j'ai pas trop compris, un hein, système de ralenti, le truc comme ça, mais euh, j'arrive pas à vraiment l'utiliser. C'est le truc qu'on voit en haut à gauche, là, le... mon pistolet qui se. Merde. Mon pistolet qui se, qui se charge au fur et à mesure, là. Alors là, ce qui vient de se passer, c'est le truc en haut à droite. En haut à droite, une petite tête de mort. Et euh, quand elle est remplie, en fait, ça te permet d'éviter une balle mortelle. Le petit récapti de sortie, ouais, bah voilà, bah c'est pour ça. Euh, c'est ce que je fais en fait maintenant. Et tu vas voir, là, je vais péter le ralenti en fait pour, euh, pour allumer Jean-Michel. Voilà. Voilà. Et en fait, maintenant, à chaque fois que je stream, je vais faire comme ça. Je mettrai à chaque fois le nom, le prix, euh, la date de sortie. Euh... Et bien souvent quand je stream c'est beaucoup pour présenter les jeux. Bon bah là c'est un jeu, celui-là a été publié par Ubisoft donc bon il a pas vraiment besoin d'un coup de main pour, pour être connu. Mais la plupart du temps je, je stream sur tous des jeux, des jeux indépendants donc ils sont pas forcément connus. Oh je vais mourir. Non 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 Putain. Putain mais c est, c est, ils sont où ceux qui me canard là Ah là il y en a un. Non. Là c'est le boss. Ah putain, là y'en a. Oh la galère. J'étais presque bien là. J'étais presque bien. Ah putain, allez. Pourtant vraiment il est pas trop dur le jeu, mais.. Mais là je pinaille violemment. Mais après j'ai juste le colt là je pense que c'est pas optimisé pour, euh, pour le boss quoi. A mon avis il a trop de points de vie pour Waouh wow, wow. J'ai dû me prendre une dynamite là C'est ça que je suis pas très bon en FPS et du coup euh... Dès qu'il y, qu y a un peu trop d'ennemis et des trucs à faire, je, je pine un peu. Et en fait, j'ai du mal à voir. Euh... Mais putain, qui c'est qui me tire dessus là Putain, c'est lui qui m'a fait si mal que ça Oh, mais il y a de la dynamite partout là. Désolé, t'arrives vraiment dans les moments hein, jusqu'à présent. Euh... Bon, J'étais déjà mort deux trois fois, mais des moments un peu à la con quoi. Mais, euh, mais là, je galère réellement quoi. Pire, je peux tenter au fusil, mais.
bon bah là je galère vraiment hein. Ah j'ai des munitions mais je m'en fous des munitions Mais putain mais comment c'est qu'il me fait aussi mal quoi C'est juste fou quoi Merde, il y a la dynamite, il y a la dynamite, je vais mourir encore. Là vraiment je suis désolé, c'est ridicule. Non Là c'est juste ridicule quand je me fais défoncer. C'est la pression, il n'y a pas eu de per y a eu personne sur le stream depuis le début de la soirée là. Et du coup, du coup là il y a la panique. J'ai envie de faire du beau jeu. Ah, Est-ce que si c'est la balle Alors, il est où je le vois plus Oula. Mais putain, mais... Ah bah quand même, putain. Ah comme j'en ai chié quoi. Oh ok donc chapitre terminé. Ah, J'ai vraiment rempli la pour ce chapitre quoi. Et en fait du coup le principe c'est que tu joues un chasseur de primes hein, qui arrive dans un qui arrive dans un bar et qui raconte un peu sa vie quoi. Et sauf qu'il y a une partie de sa vie qui est connue par les bouquins et en fait lui il essaie de l'enjoliver pour, qu a... pour que ce soit un peu encore plus classe quoi. Et souvent les mecs qui lui parlent, il y en a qui le croient ou pas quoi. Et des fois t'as des histoires qui, ça... qui se modifient quoi. Il dit ouais j'ai fait ci, j'ai fait ça, j'ai buté machin, il fait bah non c'est pas possible, c'est lui qui a buté lui. Il fait ah oui non mais c'est pas comme ça que c'est passé parce qu'en fait on a cru que c'est lui qui a buté lui parce que si. Et hop et tu refais la scène mais de façon différente pour, euh, pour tout modifier quoi. He killed his first man at 15. From that day forward, he had a price on his head and wouldn't back down for nobody. En tout cas, graphiquement, il est vraiment cool. Il a beau être vieux, il, est, euh, il rend vraiment bien. Et après, pour les gens qui aiment bien le scoring, je pense, je pense qu'il est intéressant parce que tout, euh, tout ce qui est combo, tir en pleine tête, etc., ça rapporte des points. Pareil pour la conclusion des, euh, des, souvent des, des duels, des trucs comme ça qui rapportent aussi des points sur où tu touches. Et du coup, je pense qu'il y a des gens qui l'avaient joué euh, vraiment au scoring. Quoi. Ah bah non, mais là, si vous me dites pas que je mourrais dès le début. Euh... C'est un peu foutu de ma gueule le jeu. Bah en gros ouais tu, euh, tu refais sa vie quoi, enfin là tu, tu joues sa vie telle que lui il l'a décrit mais tu, tu te rends bien compte qu'il y a des conneries dedans quoi, qu'il y a des trucs c'est pas lui, euh, c'est sûrement pas lui qui s'est occupé de tel ou tel mec mais... Uh, 
Tu vois, là du coup, ils viennent de le dire, ils viennent de dire, mais c'est pas les mecs, c'est pas les Texas Rangers qui ont eu machin, il fait, non, non, ça c'est ce qu'ils ont voulu vous faire croire. Et en fait, en gros, dans toutes les, dans toutes les, quasiment toutes les plus grosses confrontations de l'Ouest, en fait, c'est lui qui est intervenu, quoi. Enfin, en tout cas, il essaie de te faire croire que c'est lui qui est intervenu. Et du coup, c'est plutôt rigolo, quoi. Mais la mise en scène elle est vraiment bien. Elle est vraiment super bien. Wait, I'm jumping a gun here. Let me back up and give you some background on this son bitch. He deserves that much. Don't you think so, man? T'as des petits flashbacks, des petits rollbacks de machin. John Wesley Harden was a killer. By the end, he confessed to taking the lives of 42 men. He was a bona fide folk hero by then, and had amassed a gang of armed miscreants and other assorted thugs. He and his men set up camp outside of town. And I was hoping Bob was among them. Shit, it's cold. Damn it! Shoot that son of a bitch! They didn't ask why I was there. They knew. Because most of them were wanted as well. I figured Martin was here somewhere, but to get to him, I'd have to get past his gun hands. And that was easier said than done, as most of them were as foolish and full of bravado as I was. Et avec les points, ça fait monter une petite jauge d'expérience en bas à gauche qui permet d'avoir des, euh, des talents en plus en fait. Bien, j'avais pas vu. Mais c'est quoi ce pistolet que j'ai pris là Bien, j'ai pas dû. Je vais essayer de retrouver l'autre euh, pistolet que j'ai, parce que je le préfère à celui-là. Euh, tac, prendre secret, ok. Et le secret en fait, enfin euh, les secrets, ça te, euh, ça te file des, des infos sur ce qui s'est réellement passé euh, dans l'histoire euh, des états unis en fait. Mais... Je peux mettre des coups au corps à corps aussi. Mais c'est vrai que par contre j'adore cette ambiance quoi, tout ce qui est western, je trouve ça vraiment trop cool quoi. Il est sympa, je retrouve nos LCS. Ah tu regardes les LCS Passé sur mon corps, j'aime bien découvrir de jeux par le stream. Bah honnêtement, ouais, n'hésite pas à passer sur ma chaîne, hein. de toute façon je stream euh, énormément d'indépendants. Alors après moi c'est vrai que je préfère euh, tout ce qui est shoot the map, hack and slash, euh, roguelike, euh, top down shooter, ce genre de trucs. Les plateformes là aussi j'aime bien. Mais euh, c'est super rare que je fasse des gros jeux en fait, enfin que je fasse des jeux triple A quoi. Celui-là c'est limite parce que toi c'est utilisé par Ubisoft mais ça reste une petite, euh, ça reste comme une petite société qui l'a faite. Mais ouais n'hésite pas à passer, n'hésite hein. pas à follow, je sais pas trop si t'as déjà follow la chaîne ou pas. Et, euh, et puis voilà. Après moi je pense que je vais peut-être essayer de le faire une fois. Je crois qu'il y a 4-5 heures de durée de vie, ouais, ça peut faire un peu beaucoup. Mais euh, n'hésite pas à repasser tout à l'heure, a pas de problème. I wondered if Bob was among them. And I steeled myself for the fight ahead. For as good as I was, deep down I wondered if John Wesley wasn't just a little bit better. Et en tout cas, quoi qu'il arrive, merci de passer, c'est cool.
Attends, faut que j'aille en ville et faut que j'aille là-bas. Je passe pas où pour aller là-haut, bon. Et là, il y a un chemin là-bas. Euh, J'ai mis un fouet une poignée de jour. Ah oui, c'est vrai que c'est vrai que tu venais de la main avec le GSS, ouais. Très très bien. Euh, et ben, je ne sais pas comment faut que j'aille, tiens. Je suis perdu. Mais à plus tard, du coup, et pas de soucis. Bon là je peux pas passer par là. Du coup faut que je passe par où pour y aller. Je passe par où. Oh mais merde, elle était là-bas la ville en fait. J'ai fait non. I would first need to dispatch his cadre of oh. hired killers. Most of these degenerates were beyond redemption. But John Wesley might have been a different story. Ouais, non, mais là, là j'ai complètement raté le truc. Et en fait, il y avait un petit. Euh... Ah, il y avait un petit truc là, un petit. Euh... Merde, je sais plus comment ça s'appelle ces trucs, c'est j'aime pas ça. was in fact his birthday celebration. Ah j'ai plus de balles, oh là là. I think I already mentioned that I found Harden in this very saloon. to say nobody there was happy to see me. In fact, I felt a certain hostility. Est-ce qu'il y a une balle qu'on va pas arriver C'est moche, con. Ça, ça me fait 
fait chier de perdre pas mal de, de pistolets là. I was disappointed that neither Bob nor John Wesley were among the dead. But that was short-lived, as a moment later I was facing down the fastest gun in the West. Felt a bolt of adrenaline. Or maybe that was fear. He was well known for his tricks, and I knew I'd need my own if I was ever to defeat him. I'm sure of it. Pas compris, là. Alors comment ça se passe En fait là il a une vieille astuce là. J'ai pas dégainé là. C'est entièrement ma faute. Il reste comme ça, mais le truc là, je comprends pas. On va se le refaire. Ah mais d'accord en fait j'ai la... Ouais j'ai la cible qui est immense quoi. Je ne peux pas comprendre comment 
I felt a bolt of adrenaline. Or maybe that was fear. Well known for his tricks. And I knew I'd need my own if I was ever to defeat him. Du coup je peux esquiver QED a priori et esquiver quoi Alors voilà, peut-être esquiver de l'autre côté en fait du coup Donc là il est tiré à droite mais est-ce qu'il tire tout le temps Enfin il tire sur ma, ma gauche Est-ce qu'il tire tout le temps à gauche Ça c'est la question Je vais tirer dessus euh, pas à la régulière, tant pis. Euh, si on joue pas le scoring, mais euh, j'aurais aimé comprendre. <rire> j'aurais aimé comprendre. Mais putain, je comprends rien, non Mais après, c'est que si j'avais lu, euh, si j'avais lu ce qu'il me disait, ça aurait peut-être été mieux, mais... Faster than grease lightning, but being inebriated as he was, he didn't count his shots. And now, he was at my mercy. So he didn't die? No, I sent him to prison. Years later, after he was free, some restless avenger took his life. Shot him in the back in a saloon, just like this one. Anybody up for another beer? Ben? Mais en fait c'est tout ça, on fait juste que j'esquive ces deux balles et qu'après je remette une. Thank you, darling. Yeah, some say revenge is a dish best served cold. So whatever happened to that Bob guy you were after? Personally, I'd like to hear some of your other adventures. Like, uh, I don't know, do you ever go toe to toe with a red man? Yes, I did, Ben. I remember once I was after this renegade Apache, Grey Wolf. Strangely enough, revenge was also his primary motivation. Bounty was put on Grey Wolf's head, and that's how I came to hunt him in the mountains. Mountains so high they tickled the nether regions of heaven. Grey Wolf was a Chiricahua Apache medicine man who had led a war party in revenge for a massacre against his people. The U.S. Army had attacked his tribe during his daughter's sacred sunrise ceremony, and the slaughter was unspeakable. I understood his anger, as there's nothing more traumatic than seeing those you love die in a cruel and painful death. Right from the beginning, I couldn't shake the feeling that Grey Wolf was watching my every move. 
He led a band of young Apache warriors who wanted retribution and were more than willing to die for him. They saw me before I saw them. C'est fort ça. C'est très très fort. That's why they had retreated there. I admit to having some regrets about going after them the way I did. But then again, I got a lot of those. That led to a deeper cave. Don't tell me you went in there. Yeah, but it's not out of bravery so much as pure angry cussedness. Then, 
I had a stubborn streak a mile wide. I wasn't about to back down. So it was like pitch black in there? Actually, it was pretty well lit. They had torches on the wall. Was his cave. Big as hell, Ben. Shirakawa had hid out there during the Indian Wars. They thought it was haunted with the ghosts of those murdered by the horse soldiers. The cave was haunted with dead Indian ghosts? To be honest, I was more concerned with the live ones than the dead ones. so much about engines. Well, a few years back, I was married to two Mescalero women. At the same time? Yeah, they were sisters. Polygyny is traditional among the Mescalero. So what happened? Oh, I had to get out of there. Those girls never shut up. Both of them nagging at me all the time. Drove me half crazy. I haven't seen them since. No, I mean, what happened with Grey Wolf? I came upon this flooded grotto, and that's what I saw him. <coughs> He came to me unarmed and unafraid. His voice echoed in the shadows. And I sensed he meant me no harm. You carry great darkness in your heart. And if you do not release it, it will claim your soul. The sound of his voice put some kind of ancient Indian spell on me. As his story unfolded in my mind. You will come to this place again and kill many more men and the darkness will grow until it consumes everything that you are. The soul would have no rainbow if the eye had no tears. He said I was a great warrior, a coyote man, unequaled by any other pale-faced warrior, or something like that. The snakes will bite shadows of your past until a venom poisons your heart and an echo of the song of the dead summons the spirits deep from within the mountains. I didn't quite get what he was saying, but there was definitely snakes. And indeed, his warriors surrounded me and attacked me like hungry wolverines. They couldn't stop me though, and Grey Wolf wasn't in the mood for idle talk.
couldn't see any way out of this trap. But suddenly, one just appeared. Kind of like a miracle. 